Hello everyone and welcome to another Plasma Prince video. Although I'm not doing this one alone today, instead I will be collaborating with Zach Armstrong from Lab Coats to make a DIY solid state Tesla coil video. Hey everyone, I'm Zach Armstrong with Lab Coats and today I'll be collaborating with the Plasma Prince and Jay from Plasma Channel to bring you what I think could be the simplest solid state Tesla coil in existence. Period. And with that, I'll hand things back over to the Plasma Prince. Prince? Thank you, Zach Armstrong. Now, could you please tell us how the circuit works so we can get started on the build? All Tesla coils operate in the same basic way. You have two coils that are placed in close proximity to one another, and you apply a resonant voltage to the smaller coil, which will induce a larger resonant voltage in this larger secondary coil. Now, how they produce these resonant voltages is kind of dependent on the model. Spark gap Tesla coils, like the one that I own, utilize high voltage capacitor banks and high voltage power supplies, and a spark gap, of course, to create the resonant pulses needed to drive the coil. However, the coil that we're building, the solid state test of the coil, uses a very special method, which I'll talk about now. How the circuit works is like this. You have a potentiometer, which acts like a voltage divider, connected to the gate of a MOSFET. The gate of a MOSFET is kind of like the switch part of an on-off switch. Whenever you apply a certain voltage to the gate, it allows electricity to either flow or not flow through the drain to source connection. The base of the secondary is also connected to the gate of the MOSFET. As you turn the knob on the potentiometer, the voltage to the gate will increase until electricity is allowed to flow through the drain to source connection, and therefore the primary coil. Whenever voltage flows through the primary coil, a current is induced in the secondary coil, which in turn opposes the voltage at the gate of the MOSFET, thus turning it back off. This happens at exactly the resonant frequency because the secondary coil's output is in a sine wave that goes from positive to negative to positive to negative. With each positive cycle of the secondary coil, the gate is turned on, and with each negative cycle, the gate is turned off. This happens at exactly the resonant frequency, and therefore causes a large voltage to be built up in the secondary, which erupts at the top as electrical discharges. Now, in the circuit, you may also see a capacitor and a Zener diode. The capacitor that you see here is not a resonant capacitor, but instead just an energy storage unit that applies a quick high current pulse to the MOSFET once it is turned on again. The Zener diode, or the TVS diode that you see here, is simply to protect the gate to source connection of the MOSFET and not allow it to go above 12 volts, which could potentially damage the MOSFET. Awesome. Now that we know how the circuit works, we can get right to building it. So grab yourself a breadboard and start plugging your components in. Now for this circuit, you're gonna need a 10 amp, one kilovolt diode for rectification. I will leave the link to those and all of these parts down below. A 50 to 100 nanofarad capacitor I'm just using one of the leftover ones from Young Thor because capacitors can be run under voltage. So even though this is a 2 kilovolt, it should work fine. You're also going to need an IRFP460 MOSFET. These are relatively high power and suitable for this circuit. You're also going to need a 50k potentiometer, a couple Zener diodes. You can get many of these for quite cheap. So. That shouldn't be too hard to acquire. And you're also going to need a few jumper wires. Maybe a little bit more than this. We'll see as we build the circuit. Now, if the knob on the potentiometer is facing you, that left side will be attached to your Zener diodes. So let's go ahead and get those installed.
the secondary coil I wound out of excitement off camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it to Zach to show you how to wind a proper secondary coil. Zach? If you want to test the coil of any kind, you're going to need a secondary coil. In general terms, the secondary coil is the output coil of any transformer. In a Tesla coil, the secondary is most often a tall cylindrical coil made from enameled magnet wire, usually between 20 to 30 gauge in size. A few elements contribute to a good secondary coil. For one, a good secondary coil is not tall and thin like most people want to believe. In actuality, a short, fat secondary coil will yield the best results. Additionally, you'll want magnet wire that's not too thin, since thin magnet wire breaks more easily and will provide a higher resistance per foot and therefore cause some unwanted energy loss. When it comes to winding a secondary coil, it's best to get comfortable, since the process can take a few hours. Start by attaching the end of the wire to the coil top with some tape, and then wind your way down. I like to rest the coil on a soft surface, position the wire with one hand, and rotate the whole thing with the other hand. Speaking of hands, make sure your hands are fairly clean before winding a secondary coil, since contaminants on the coil could cause it to short when the coil is powered up. Now, it's very hard to wind the whole coil in one sitting, so you'll have some extra tape on hand to keep your work from unwinding when you go on break. Those are my tips for wanting a secondary coil, and now, back to the plasma prints. Thank you, Zach, for explaining how to build a secondary coil. Now, let's get back to building the circuit. So there's a few things you should know before you actually start firing the coil up and touching the sparks. Number one, your MOSFET might short out or even start to smoke and fail if you touch the sparks. So be careful when you do. Another is, if there's too much current in the circuit, which will also destroy the MOSFET, you should add some more turns onto the primary coil so that there's less current draw. Also, if your circuit doesn't work at first, which, believe me, is not uncommon, try switching the polarity of the primary coil first. It, for me, it's even been the difference between a working coil and a not working coil. Alright, a quick review of the MOSFET connection shouldn't hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and take you over to the whiteboard and give you a little review of the schematic. Alright, so here's the schematic. This right here inside of the circle is the MOSFET. That left pin on your MOSFET is going to be your gate. That is if the black side of your MOSFET is facing you. And that right pin on the MOSFET, yet again, if the black side is facing you, is going to be at your source. Your source is going to be connected to your Zener diode arrangement right here. And the gate is going to be attached to the middle pin of the potentiometer and the base of the secondary. Don't forget that connection. Very important. And then your drain is going to be that center pin. And that will be attached to one end of the primary coil. The other end of the primary coil will be attached to this side with a diode on it, which is also known as this pin of the potentiometer. All right, so we've got mostly important stuff out of the way, but there's still some things in Zach's video that you're probably going to want to touch up on before you start building this circuit. Well, let's say you have the circuit all ready to fire up right now. Don't fire it up yet. There's a few other things that we're going to touch up on regarding safety. But you won't be hearing it from me. You'll be hearing it from our special guest who has decided to dedicate some time to this collaboration. Which, by the way, we need to give him a huge thanks for that because he's got a lot of big things on his schedule. He has four years of content creating experience and 15 or more years experience in high voltage in Tesla coils. That's insane. I've hardly been at it for one year. So now, I'm going to turn the time over to the one and the only Jay from Plasma Channel. Over to you, Jay. Now, before we turn on the coil, we've got to talk about safety. Hey, I'm Jay from Plasma Channel, and I specifically want to talk about three things in particular. The differences between the primary and the secondary circuit, the skin effect, and damage to sensitive equipment nearby. Now, whether you're using a small coil or a large coil, the secondary circuit and the primary circuit are two completely different beasts altogether. The secondary circuit, as you know, puts out those beautiful high voltage arcs on the top that if it's a small enough coil, you can touch the sparks. The primary circuit, on the other hand, contains mildly lower voltage, but tremendously higher current. So safety rule number one, number one, is avoid touching any part of the primary circuit at all times when it's operating. Now, the second point of safety is touching the sparks and why with a lower powered coil, you can touch those high voltage arcs coming out of a Tesla coil. That's because that electricity is extremely high frequency AC, therefore the skin effect. But the skin effect 
states that the higher frequency electricity is, the more on the outside of a conductor it travels. So if you have a copper wire and you run several kilohertz through that wire, the electricity is not actually gonna saturate through the width of the wire, it'll actually just pass through the outer skin. And ironically, if you apply it to a human being, in theory, most of the electricity will travel on the outside of your body as opposed to through your chest or through your body. Now the last point of safety is if you have any sensitive equipment nearby whatsoever, move it away from a Tesla coil. Tesla coils are the original radio transmitters of the world. They pump out a tremendous amount of power and in between each spark that you see, they're pumping out a tremendous amount of electromagnetic radiation in all directions. Now that can induce higher voltages in things nearby that are sensitive, it can throw off scales, and it can throw off precision instruments. So those are my three points of safety for you to enjoy a Tesla coil and to make it last forever while being safe. Many thanks for those points of safety, Jay. We really appreciate you making time for this collaboration. And now that we have heard those points, we get to rep this bad boy at full power. Alright everyone, thank you for watching the Plasma Prince. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and to support my channel by subscribing so we can get closer to our 1000 subscriber goal. Be sure to check out my Instagram where I'll keep all my personal experiments, and for channel news you can check my Facebook. Don't forget to stay safe, do your research, and stay tuned.